Hi, we're going to be creating a new uh, course here in. Oops. We're going to be creating a new um, activity here, a new quiz activity. So we go to we're in our our editing is turned on, and we're going to go to quiz, add new add an activity quiz. Okay, so uh, let's get into. Um, so we're going to create a quiz. We're going to call this a sample quiz activity. And our introduction is um, basically the instructions for our quiz. So um, we're going to call those instructions. So we're going to do sample quiz instructions. Obviously, the instructions for an assessment are going to be different than an average assignment. I would still include, you know, I would still include step-by-step uh, um, -step instructions, including, uh, especially if this is the first few times that your students have done the quiz, like just how to physically take the quiz in the interface. Um, okay, so we have a display description uh, on a course page. Okay, that's going to remain unchecked. Open quiz and close quiz, time limit. Um, attempts allowed. You know, you can do a single attempt, or uh, you know, if it's one attempt, obviously the highest grade doesn't matter. Um, okay, so the grade is uncategorized currently, but then you definitely want to have a category for for assessments, obviously in your in your grade book. Um, layout question order as shown on edit screen. Um, so new page for every question. I would suggest to do that. It's just easier to do it for the students. Shuffle within question. Uh, so that is whether the answers are shuffled for each question. The questions are shuffled and the answers are shuffled inside the questions. How questions have behaved. Deferred feedback. Um, so adaptive mode or adaptive mode with no penalties. Deferred feedback or immediate feedback. Um, or manually graded is another one. So I would go ahead and just leave it as deferred feedback. If you have questions, you can obviously. Um, so for example, you may wish students to enter an answer to each question, then submit the entire quiz before anything is graded, or they get any feedback. That would be deferred feedback. So that's kind of the classic way to take a, to take a quiz. Um, OK, so review options during attempt, immediately after attempt. OK, so with deferred be to feedback, that means that during the attempt, there is no uh, feedback, basically. Uh, immediately after attempt, um, so they can go back in and see see the feedback. Um, while quiz is still open, while after quiz is closed, so that's, that's related to these dates up here. So basically, when open and close quiz, those are the dates in which these options would be in effect. Okay, so immediately after attempt, later while quiz is still open, or after quiz is closed. Okay, you can you you're controlling basically what the student will be able to see. Okay, um, display the user's picture, decimal place, and grades. You get two decimal places if you want. You can remove those if you want to remove those. Decimal place and question grades same for overall grades. Okay, extra restrictions on attempts require passwords. So this means you can display the quiz in your course, but not let them enter the quiz to a certain time when you give them. A Password required network address. Um, this is a, this is interesting because uh, basically what you can do is on a LAN you can specify the IP addresses of the computers that are allowed to connect for the quiz. Uh, this is a bit of an overkill in a in a K twelve environment. Um, though if you know if you're in a if you're in a computer lab with uh, fixed IP addresses, which would be rare, or a fixed pool of IP addresses. Um, this, is a, this is a case where you could do that. So say if you wanted to, you know, if you've gone to the trouble of fixing your IP addresses in a lab and you want to limit them here, that, you know, more power to you. Um, okay, so uh, enforce delay between first and second attempts. This is a great one for people for if you want to do unlimited attempts, this would disallow somebody who's just not studying in between but trying to come in and just answer every combination of questions. So force delay between later attempts. Okay, overall feedback. So this is where you give feedback 
So grade boundary at 100%, you give a specific type of feedback, and in each grade boundary below that, you give a specific type of feedback. Uh, you don't need to do this. Uh, you can if you want. So basically, if a, if a student gets a 100%, you give them this feedback. If a student were to get, let's say, 90%, we give them a different set of feedback, uh, 80, and so on. Okay. All right, uh, so as with as with every other complex Moodle activity type, we've just set the properties of the quiz here. We haven't done anything about the content, so we're going to click Save and Display. Okay, so um, so instructions, we have sample quiz instructions, grading method, highest grade, no questions have been added yet. So we're going to go ahead and edit the quiz at this point. Okay, now how Moodle handles quizzes is this. Um, um, they actually, get, they actually, it's uh, it's good that they have. Um, it's good that they have uh, um, this idea behind basic quiz making because assessment assessment online can get pretty complicated. Okay, now this is different from previous versions of Moodle. In previous versions of Moodle, what you would have to do is you would have to actually um, create a question bank first and then import those questions from a question bank. Okay, uh, this is a little bit different. So, so basically, what they have us doing here is they have us. Um, they have the quiz editing right here. It's very easy, right? Okay, so we can go ahead and add question. This is a great improvement on previous, um, a great improvement on previous uh, 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 question entry systems for Moodle. Um, so let's say that we have um, true false or multiple choice. Let's say we have multiple choice. Oops. Okay, and once again, the category is. Um, Okay, so the category is basically the um, is the uh, um, what question bank they're going to be added to. So let's go ahead and just create a question bank just for this quiz. So the question name, let's call this question one. Okay, and the question text is uh, what your opinion of this quiz. Okay, and the answers are default mark one. Okay, one answer only. The number of choices. This is like, you know, if you're going to say, you know, your first, you know, your first answer is A, B, C, or A, you know, capital A, B, C, one, two, three, whatever your, however you want to number your. Um, possible responses. Okay, so your choice one um, is uh, love it. Okay, let's say that that is our correct response. Our grade would be a hundred percent. So basically, what you can do is you can have multiple. You can let them choose one answer only, right? But you can only give. You can divide up your percentage, right? So. Uh, basically, what you can do is you can give, say, for example, if they, if you, if you let them answer multiple answers aloud, you could give a um, hundred points for choice one, but for choice two, you could take away that hundred percent. Okay, so, so you can give negative points for a, for a particular choice. So your classic multiple choice would be one answer only for whichever answer you want, whichever answer is your correct answer, you give a grade of 100%. Okay, your feedback, uh, you may want to give feedback or not. Choice two is hate it. Choice three is don't care. So we can leave this grade as none. Okay, so it doesn't affect their grade either way. Choice four is um, 
really don't care. Alright, the grid is also none. So, basically, uh, we go through, so that's their choice 5, up to choice 5, combined feedback for any correct response, for any partially correct response, for incorrect responses. Um, so, you can also set a penalty, multiple tries penalty for each incorrect try. Okay, so there's a 0% penalty. So, you can also set up hints, hint text. Um, so, basically, if they give an incorrect response, you can clear the incorrect response and give a hint. Um, and you can also put tags. So, that say you're going to, for the, and the tags is for the, the um, so the hints is for when the student is answering the questions wrong. This are the hints that will display if they answer their question incorrect one or two times. And you can add additional hints. Uh, the tags, this is for the question itself. So this is um, uh, basically you can manage the official tags for a question. This is just to help you to search for things inside of the, a question bank. So let's go ahead and click Save Changes. Okay, so there is our um, there's our initial question. So you can see that adding questions can become a bit of a um, a bit of a, a difficult thing. So the best case scenario is if we look up here at this question bank contents. If um, what you can do is you can share question banks. So let's say that as I'm adding these in, remember that when I chose the category for the question. Well, that category is for sample quiz activity, right? Okay, so those, those are my categories. Okay, so let's see if anyone else has added any additional uh, quizzes that or questions that are, are available. Okay, so for this, in this case, they have not. Let's go up to default for CTE, and there are no questions here. Default for template courses. So basically, I'm going through all the question banks right now, seeing if there are additional questions that I can add in. and default for system. So I just looked through all the other question banks on this Moodle installation. There are no, are no other additional uh, uh, um, test questions available or quiz questions available. Okay, so there's my one quiz question. Um, and we can go ahead and add a, um, not sure what add a random question is. So, uh, <laughs> Okay, so we can add a, a second question. Let's say we want this to be a, um, excuse me, a, a short answer. Okay, and we click Next. And we're going to make this, um, obviously question two is not a great question name. It should be a descriptive. It should be descriptive of what. Um, okay. So what is the OS that Linus Torvalds wrote the kernel for? Okay. So that's a a good solid. You know, short answer question because there's only one response, right? So answer. Uh, so we're going to give the. Okay, so we're going to give this 100% because it's the correct answer. Answer two. We're going to put Windows because it's the, and we're going to give a grade of none because it's the incorrect answer. And finally, we're going to say. Okay, and also a grade of none because that's not the correct answer either. Okay, so settings for multiple penalties, that's a 0%. Okay, and then we have hints and tags, so save changes. So what you're, we should be getting the picture on on these quizzes is that, you know, there's a lot of um, options that are not necessary. So really when we go in, you know, it's only necessary to provide the, the question title, the question itself, and then to provide the responses as well as the, uh, the percentage 
that the student gets for the correct response. Okay. All right. So you can, you're going to need to go in and, and, and uh, if you want to get more fancy than short answer, multiple choice, or true false, uh, you will need to go in and experiment with those. Uh, so obviously we did this on page one. Page two was an empty page. Uh, so we're only going to have a one page quiz here. Uh, so once we are finished, we can go to ordering and paging. Okay, so ordering and paging, basically we can go in and we can uh, just kind of reorder questions or move them around. Of course, we're going to shuffle the questions anyways, so it didn't really matter for our quiz in particular. Okay, so we're done editing our quiz, so let's go back out and see um, and see how it looks. So let's come back in to, and we can just on the on the menu on the left hand side, we can just click on the link for the quiz. In theory. Okay, so we clicked on info. Info. We can click preview quiz now. Okay, so there we go. So you can preview the quiz. Uh, this is how it will appear to students. Okay, and interestingly enough, in the short answer, I really only had to give one uh, answer that would be correct. If I wanted to give answers that would reduce their credit, then I could give additional answers. But let's go ahead and okay, submit all and finish. And this is what happens. So we give them a review right after the test, and I got both answers correct. Wouldn't you know it? Okay, I can also start a new preview uh, where I can go back in and edit the questions. So the preview mode is a pretty pretty nice thing to have. All right, so let's. Uh, I hope that that gives you a good introduction to quizzing in um, 